Great. Hello, everyone. So without any further ado, the following talk, that's make your data pipeline robust with great expectation is presented by Kaski. Ah, yeah. So thank you for having me. I'm so thrilled and excited about having my presentation in this great conference uh, in this PyCon Taiwan 2021. And uh, thank you for waiting me. And actually, I couldn't share my uh, window uh, some technical reasons. So now my PyCon staff is sharing my window. So uh, let's start uh, my presentation. And to begin with, let me start my, uh, let me introduce myself uh, briefly and please go to present next presentation. Thank you. So I'm Keisuke Kenishitani from Japan. I'm a data engineer and web developer at Silver X Technology Corporation in Japan. And our headquarters is located in Osaka, Japan. And we are the one of the leading company of AI marketing field in Japan. We provide uh, several marketing services using our personalization, personalization technology. And uh, we are developing our own recommendation engine and provide a recommendation service named Agent Recommender. And I'm in charge of the backend system of this recommendation service. And we are running the ETL pipeline on AWS for that. And today, I'd like to show, uh, share my experience of uh, introducing uh, great expectations to our ETL pipeline. And here is today's agenda. So first, I'm going to talk about the reason or motivation why we decided to introduce uh, great expectations to our ETL pipeline. And next, I'm going to show you uh, key features of great expectations. And then I was going to have a quick demonstration of that, but I'm sorry, I can't share my window now, so I will skip it. And then I'm going to talk about our use case of great expectations. And finally, I'm going to have uh, the quick summary of my presentation. And please, next. Uh, thank you. And before moving my main story, let me have a pre, uh, quick note. And there are two versions of great expectations now, V3 API and V3 API. And my presentation is based on V2 API because we are still using V2 API in production. But the latest document of great expectation is updated to V3 API just two months ago. So I will let you know if my presentation is only true for V2 API. And to, so first of all, let me show you the motivation of why we decided to introduce great expectation to our ETL pipeline. And now here uh, it shows the overview of our data pipeline. And let me show you the data flow of the on the data pipeline. So first, our recommendation service, Agent Recommender, receives requests from our client. And then it saves data on S3 as JSON format. And then the ETA pipeline converts data step by step and saves intermediate data on S3. And finally, it, say it copies data on RDS. And let's take a look at each characteristic of data storage. And please, next slide. Thank you. So regarding RDS, uh, there are some good features to protect data. For example, it has data type checkers, and also it has uh, constraint features. So we can protect data on RDS in some certain degree. Uh, on the other hand, uh, regarding S3, there are no such key features. Uh, there are no such features. Uh, it does not have data type checkers and it does not have uh, constraint features. So we can't protect uh, data on S3 like RDS. And please, next slide. So uh, imagine if uh, our recommendation service receives bad or malicious request from our client, or imagine if some bugs included by program update. And then in this case, uh, there is a possibility that some unexpected JSON is saved in the first SV, and then it can cause data issues on our ETL pipeline. And so uh, and sometimes we can catch and find the data issues because the ETL pipeline uh, raises error against the data issues, but sometimes it can't find, uh, we can't find and catch the data issue because the ETL data pipeline processes the unexpected JSON without errors. So uh, this is uh, what we wanted to resolve on our ET pipeline. So we wanted to monitor the data quality on S3, and also we wanted to find data issues as soon as possible. 
And this is the reason why we decided to introduce great expectations on our ETL pipeline. So what is great expectations? Great expectation is the Python-based open source tool for validating, documenting, and profiling data. And to use it, we can maintain the quality of data, and also we can improve uh, communication between teams. And there are three key features of great expectations. Uh, please, next slide. Thank you. Uh, there are expectations, auto data profiling, and data docs. And let me explain these key features from top to bottom quickly. So first key feature is expectations, and it's most important. And what is an expectation? Uh, an expectation is what we expect against column on data. For example, uh, we can define an expectation like the values in this column must be between one and six like this. And once we define expectation, we can validate data and also we can test the data passes the expectations. So how we can define expectations? Uh, we can define expectations by writing uh, Python code like the, this top uh, cell. And actually there are a variety of between expectations in great expectations and you can use them and the expectations are saved as JSON format, but it is translated into human readable code when you see the result of the variation in data docs. And uh, please, next slide. Thank you. Uh, so now we understand that uh, once we define expectations, we can validate data using them. But what is there are a lot of columns on data. In this case, it would be a bit troublesome to define uh, expectations for each column. And in this case, uh, we can use this key feature, auto data profiling. It means uh, great expectations can generate expectations automatically from given data. For example, if we give uh, historical data to great expectations, it profiles data and generates expectations automatically. And if the generated expectation is not so suitable, you can edit expectation later by hand. And please, next slide. Uh, so we understand that once we define expectation, we can validate data using them. And after that, uh, you want to, you think you want to see the result of the validation. And you can see the result of the validation in data docs. It is third key feature. And this page shows the result of the validation against passage account column. For example, uh, you can see an expectation was failed. And the definition of expectation is the value must be between one and six in passenger, to passenger count column. But this expectation was failed because there were unexpected values with zero like this. Uh, so uh, thank you. And I just explained three key features, uh, expectations, auto data profiling, and data docs. And actually, I was I wanted to show you uh, these key features with quick demo, but I'm sorry, I can't share my window now. So let me skip this slide. And let me uh, please skip this slide too. Uh, thank you. And finally, uh, let me show you our use case of great expectations. And I couldn't explain that, but actually it is so easy to introduce great expectations to the existing data. And so I introduced great expectations quickly to our ETL pipeline. And also I set up to notify errors to Slack if the validation was is failed. Um, but uh, there were some challenges to introduce great expectations to our ETL pipeline. And let me show you one challenge of that. And it was a special column. Uh, it means there was a special column in our data. And it is like this. Uh, the value in this column is saved as string. And it is evaluated as list in the data pipeline. And that sounds not so special. But the final condition is special. It is the length of the list should be two or less. It means, uh, please, next slide. The first value is OK, but the second value is not OK. And actually, uh, some data issue cause, uh, some data issue happens if the second value 
uh, is included in our data. So we wanted to deal with uh, this condition with great expectations. And actually, the bit, uh, we don't have, uh, there are no bit in expectation to deal with that, but we can deal with that with custom expectation. And we can create custom expectation for V3 API and V3 API, but the uh, how to create custom expectation are slightly different. And let me show you how to create V2, uh, custom expectations in V2 API. And it is simple. Uh, first, what we have to do is create custom dataset.py file as the last slide showed. And next, inside that Python file, uh, what we have to do is uh, define custom uh, dataset class and define the custom expectation inside it. And yeah, and after uh, defining that, you can call custom expectation like that. And let me uh, summarize my uh, presentation quickly. Uh, I just, so first I explained why I decided to introduce great expectations, and then, then I explained uh, the key features of great expectations. And finally, I showed you our use case and show you how to create custom expectations. And please, next slide. And before finishing my presentation, uh, let me just inform my company. Actually, we are hiring new engineers. So if you are interested in, in working in Japan, or if you are interested in, in working AI technology field, please uh, feel free to ask us. And thank you so much. Uh, please, next slide. Yep, uh, anyway, thank you so much. And I'm so sorry for uh, leading my uh, presentation. And thank you so much, uh, my PyCon uh, staff. Uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kazuke, for your sharing. And notice there's uh, quite a few questions on, on our Slido. So let's go through them quickly. So the first one is, um, is great expectations scalable? If source data ramp up, could it be handled properly in great expectations? Oh, wow, that's a great question. And actually, uh, we can uh, deal with uh, this scale scaling data, uh, but we have to some trick to do that, in my opinion. Uh, for example, in my case, we have a lot of data on S3, and to deal with that, that we are calling great expectations via Python API. And also we uh, deal with uh, great expectations by uh, multi-processing to handle a lot of data. Alrighty. And the next question is, um, is great expectation a mature data pipeline tool or compared to others, such as Airflow or Luigi? Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, also a great question. And actually, uh, Great expectation is not pipeline two, but data variation two. And there are uh, integration to use great expectation in Airflow or Ridge or Preset or such famous uh, data framework. And you can combine great expectation with uh, these data uh, framework too. Awesome. And the next question is, in your example, special column, how about store this list as native JSON array? Uh, yeah, thank you for great advice. Uh, I wish I could do that, but uh, we saved the data as CSV or Paki format, but we couldn't do that. And we have to do the value as a string, and we have to validate it on memory and uh, check the length uh, as on memory. Awesome. Then that will be the only question on Slido, but I have a personal question to you. Um, since you used um, great expectation in your development environment. Um, how does it, you know, uh, increase your efficiency in terms of um, developing a new project? Uh, you mean how to deploy great expectation to production from? Uh, does, it, does it make your deployment faster? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. And uh, actually, uh, we can use the same uh, great expectation config file on de development and production. So once we check the data on development, we can apply production if the data are same between development and production. Nice, awesome. Thank you for answering. And um, well, thank you today for sharing all your experiences and your information to this topic. And I think this session will come to an end.